and welcome to Ivory Blush Roses, Crazy Quilting and Beyond. In today's episode, as we work through our challenge project, we're going to be making some leaves using fabric from our kit. They're so easy and quite a bit of fun, and they add a great deal of texture to any project. Let's get started. Let's talk briefly about supplies for the fabric leaves. I used strips of the fabric which were cut to either one inch or about two inches in width and then you need a piece that's about two and a half times that width. So my one inch fabric I was mostly cut to about two and a half to three inches. The two inch fabric was cut to about three to four inches in length and that worked really well. So same goes with ribbon. If you're using a half inch ribbon you need about one and a quarter inches of length. So you can use quite a small piece for these. The other thing that is a good thing to have is some seam sealer so that you can seal those cut edges of the fabric or the cut ends of the ribbon. On occasion I'll use a lighter if I'm using a ribbon or fabric that has a nylon or polyester content that melts nicely. Um, you just barely want to hold the edge of the fabric near the flame, not necessarily in it. You just want to melt the ends of those threads in it to keep it from raveling. And then you need beading thread, a needle, and some scissors, and you're all set to go. So now that we've made our flowers, and I've shown you how to do that, let's make some leaves. So I'm going to start with this bit. Normally this is a process that would be used with silk ribbon again, but I don't want to add another item to um, this project because again that will take me up to my limit. So when I cut my pieces of fabric I did use a little bit of fray check. Um, and there's several brands. I just happen to use the Dritz. It's cheap, it's easily available, and so that's what I've used. But I just drew a bead along each of the raw edges to make sure that it's not going to fray as much. It helps stabilize a little bit. And then part of this, um, I'm going to show you on the back leaf, it's folded over so that raw edge is actually almost exposed, but that's going to be down so you're not going to see it. And this project is not going to be something that's going to get used or handled a lot, so I can get away with it on this particular one. If I wanted to use these types of ribbon leaves on a project that was going to get handled a lot, I would definitely want the ribbon with the firm edge that's, sewn, that's woven into it um, to give it additional stability. But these are super simple. Um, they're just, I fold it in half to kind of mark where my center is, and then I open it back up, and I'm going to fold down and so that my point goes right here where that original fold was and then I'm going to fold the other side to match that. And then I'm going to just think, kind of finger press that and it holds in shape and then on the other side you can see it this way. And these are so easy. It's one row of stitching. So I'm simply going to start at my outer edge and I'm going to start actually on the back side because this side without the, the, the folded edges is going to be the front of my piece. So I'm going to start on the back. Again, just like the flowers, I'm going to use about an eighth of an inch stitch relatively close to the edge. I'm trying to get these leaves big enough that they'll function well and just make a little running stitch all the way along and if, if the fold parts move a little bit on the back side it's not a big deal. I'd like to make a slight correction to the instructions I gave. I was telling you to start the thread from the back but it actually works better to start it from the front because that tucks those outside edges going down rather than up. Um, so this one I did where it's it's pointing up 
and so it's really not quite as nice of a finish as the ones where like this one where they're really pointing down and the other thing I'm finding especially on these little leaves is if I can get all my running stitches together on the same needle before I've even pulled the thread through it's easy to get all those little pleats together and I notice that I'm doing it so I've got about five pleats and that's nice it's very symmetrical on the leaf and so I can hold it together really well pushing my needle through and then going back through and just to manage those loose ends I can go back through again on these smaller leaves it's certainly a little easier to do that um, this one I've got a little longer end on just because I think the piece of, of fabric was slightly longer so I'm just I'm just going until they're they're all sort of contained and I don't have lots of loose bits of fabric going out so I'm just sort of whip stitching that edge together getting ready to put my two knots in one go a little bit away put the second one in and done and then when we look at that leaf I think it's got a little nicer finish on it only two to go and when I actually go to sew these on I may wrap that those little ends um, to help conceal them but they're mostly going to be concealed by the flowers themselves so there'll be flowers and sequins and these turquoise blossoms mixing in with them so so those ends will disappear pretty quickly into the process and we'll get nice little motifs going with that so I'm going to keep making leaves now you've seen that simple way and hopefully by the time I see you next I will have all the rest of my flowers and leaves made and we'll talk about putting them together in a motif and I'll show you how we're going to do that. If you would like to learn more about making ribbon flowers, there are two books that I recommend. One of them is Ribbon Flowers by Helen Gibb. Um, it's a wonderful book that I have used for many years. She's got beautiful photographs of projects and diagrams for how to do things. Her work uses primarily the wired French ribbon and while I often do use it on crazy quilting, sometimes I prefer the ribbon without the wire um, just for its softer appearance. But I do use this one quite a bit and it's an excellent book. The other book that I like is The Artful Ribbon by Candace Kling. And this one, she also uses the French wired ribbon but she uses many other types of ribbon as well. And again, she's got beautiful photos of projects and ideas, and there's great diagrams and instructions for how to make these flowers. Um, and she, this one I sometimes feel is more appropriate for crazy quilting um, because it doesn't use the wired edge ribbon. It's more of an embellishment for to go on other fabric projects primarily. And so I highly recommend this one. The instructions are clear, easy to understand, just as in the other one. Both beautiful books come highly recommended. And I'll put a link down below to these where you can get them from Amazon. Thank you for watching today's episode of Ivory Blush Roses, Crazy Quilting and Beyond. I hope you enjoyed watching these little fabric leaves come together. Don't forget to subscribe, click the bell, to be notified of new episodes and give me a thumbs up. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for watching. Happy stitching. Let's go make something beautiful.